If Duke of Burgundy you would the peace whose want gives growth to the imperfections that you have cited, you must buy that peace with full accord to all our just demands. The king hath heard them, to the which as yet there is no answer made. Well then, the peace which you before so urged lies in his answer. I have but with a cursory eye or glanced the articles. Is it your grace to appoint some of your council presently to sit with us once more with better heed to re-survey them? We will suddenly pass our accept and peremptory answer. Brother, we shall. Uncle of Exeter, Brother Clarence, you, Brother Gloucester, go with the king. Will you first us to go with the princes or stay here with us? Our gracious brother, I will go with them. Haply a woman's voice may do some good when articles too nicely urged be stood on. Yet leave our cousin Catherine here with us. She is our principal demand. She hath good leave. Fair Catherine, and most fair. Will you? Will you much safe to teach? A soldier, terms such as may enter at a lady's ear and plead his love suit to her gentle heart. Your Majesty shall mock at me. I cannot speak your England. Oh, fair Catherine, if you will love me soundly with your French heart, I'll be glad to hear you confess it brokenly with your English tongue. Do you like me, Kate? Pardonnez-moi, I cannot tell. What is like me? An angel is like you, Kate, and you are like an angel. Que dis-tu que je suis semblable à les anges? Oui, vraiment. Son photographe ainsi dit-il. Oh. I said so, dear Kate, and I must not blush to affirm it. Bon Dieu, les langues des hommes sont pleines de tromperies. <laughs> what says she, fair one, that the tongues of men are full of deceit? Oui. That the tongues of the man is be full of deceit. That is the princess. Oh, the princess is the better English woman. In fact, Kate, my wooing is fit for thy understanding. I'm glad thou can speak no better English, for if thou couldst, thou wouldst find me such a plain king that thou wouldst think I'd sold my farm to buy my crown. <laughs> I know no ways to mince it in love, but directly to say I love you. Then if you urge me further than to say, do you, with faith, I wear out my suit. Come, give me your answer, if faith, do, and so, clap hands in a bargain. How say you, lady? Ah, ah. So, votre honneur, me understand well. Mary, if you were to put me to verses or to dance for your sake, Kate, why you undid me? If I could win a lady at leapfrog, or by vaulting into my saddle, with my armor on my back. Or if I might buff it for my love, or bound my horse for her favors. I could lay on like a butcher, and sit like a jack and apes, never off. But before God, Kate, I cannot look greenly, nor gasp out my eloquence, nor I have no cunning in protestation, only downright oaths, which I never use till urged, nor never break for urging. If I can love a fellow of this temper, Kate, whose face is not worth sunburning, who never looks in his glass for love of anything he sees there. Take me. If not, to say to thee that I shall die is true. But for thy love, by the Lord, no. Is it I love thee, Kate? Oh, while thou livest, dear Kate. Take a fellow of plain and uncoined constancy, for these 
fellows of infinite tongue that do rhyme themselves into ladies' favours. They do always reason themselves out again. A good leg will fall, a straight back will stoop, a black beard will turn white, a curl pate will grow bald, a fair face will wither, a full eye will wax hollow, but a good heart, Kate, is the sun and the moon, or rather the sun and not the moon, for it shines bright and never changes and keeps its course truly. If thou wouldst have such a one, take me. Take me, take a soldier. Take a soldier. Take a king. Oh, what is thou then to my love? Speak, my fair. And fairly, I pray thee. Is it possible that I should love the enemy of France? Well, no, Kate, it's not possible that you should love the enemy of France, but in loving me, Kate, you would love the friend of France. For I love France so well that I will not part with a village of it. And, Kate, when France is mine and I am yours, then yours is France and you are mine. Oh, I cannot tell. What is that? No, Kate. <sighs> well, I will tell thee in French which I'm sure will hang upon my lips like a newly married wife about her husband's neck, hardly to be shook off. <laughs> ah. Je, quand? Oh. Uh, 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 sur la possession de France, et quand vous avez la possession de moi? Let me see, what's then? Dennis, be my speed. Huh. Donc! <laughs> votre est France et vous êtes mien. It is easy for me, Kate, to conquer the kingdom is to speak so much more French. I shall never move thee in French unless it be to laugh at me. Son votre honneur, le français que vous parlez, il est meilleur que l'anglais lequel je parle. No, faith is not, Kate. But, Kate, canst thou understand thus much English? Canst thou love me? I cannot tell. Can any of your neighbors tell, Kate? I ask! Come. I know thou lovest me. Oh. And tonight, when you come into your Closet, you will question this gentlewoman about me, and Kate, you will to her dispraise those parts in me that you love with your heart. But good Kate, mock me mercifully, the rather gentle princess, because I love thee cruelly. Shall not thou and I, between St. Denis and St. George, compound a boy, half French, half English? that shall go to Constantinople and take the Turk by the beard, shall we not? What sayst thou, my fair flower de luce? La plus belle Catherine du monde, mon très cher et divin déesse. Oh, your majesty, a false French enough to deceive the most sage demoiselle that is en France. Now fire upon my false French and by my honor in true English. I love thee, Kate. By which honour I dare not swear thou lovest me, yet my blood begins to flatter me that thou dost. Notwithstanding the poor and untempering effect of my visage. Now beshrew my father's ambition, he was thinking of civil wars when he got me. But Kate, the elder I wax, the better I shall appear. <sighs> Put off your maiden blushes. Avouch the looks of your heart with the looks of an empress. Take me by the hand and say, Harry of England, I am thine. Which word thou shalt no sooner bless mine ear with all than I will say unto thee aloud, England is thine, Ireland is thine, France is thine. And Henry Plantagenet.
is fine. Come, your answer. In broken music. For thy voice is music and thy English is broken. Therefore, Queen of all, Catherine, break thy mind to me in broken English. Wilt thou have me? That is, as it shall please our roi, mon père. Uh, it will please him well, Kate. It shall please him, Kate. Then it shall also content me. Upon that, I kiss your hand and call you my queen. Oh, oh let me, Monsignor. Let me, 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 that it is not a fashion for the maids in France to kiss before they are married, would she say? Oui, vraiment. Oh, Kate. Nice customs, courtesy to great kings. You and I cannot be confined within the weak list of a country's fashion. We are the makers of manners, Kate. And the liberty that follows our places stops the mouth of all fine faults, as I will do yours. Therefore, patiently and yielding. There is witchcraft in your lips, Kate. There is more eloquence in a sugar touch of them than in the tongues of the French council. <coughs> Here comes your father. God save your majesty. My royal cousin, teach you our princess English. I would have her learn, fair cousin, how perfectly I love her, and that is good English. Shall Kate be my wife? Take her, fair son. And from her blood raise up issue to me. That the contending kingdoms of France and England, whose very shores look pale with envy of each other's happiness, may cease their hatred. And this dear conjunction plant neighborhood and Christian-like accord in their sweet bosoms. That never ward advance his bleeding sword twixt England and fair France. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Kate. Bear me witness all that here I kiss her as my sovereign queen. <laughs> God, the best maker of all marriages, combine your hearts in one, your realms in one. As man and wife being two are one in love, so be there twixt your kingdom such a spousal that never may ill office or fell jealousy, which troubles off the bed of blessed marriage, thrust in between the paction of these kingdoms to make divorce of their incorporate need. That English may as French, French Englishmen, receive each other. God speak this, Amen. Amen. Prepare we for our marriage. On which day, my Lord of Burgundy, we'll take your oath and all the peers for surety of our leagues. Then shall I swear to Kate 
and you to me. And may our oaths well kept and prosperous be.